I came across this comically cartoonish version of a differential transmission assembly. If you take a look at the model tree, all the components are fully constrained. And I decided to add some mechanism connections so this will work more like a real differential transmission. And by the way, if you ever want to find out how old a model is, just run model check. If I go to file and then prepare, let's do model check regenerate. I will use the top level and here we have the report, no errors or no warnings. But if you go to the overview section over here, I can see that this was created way back in 1996. This is 24 years old. And when you take a look at some of the modeling techniques, it's like, yeah, I can tell that it was that old. But let's play around with this anyway. If we take a look at the first component in the model tree, it's called the case. This is going to be the ground for my mechanism. So this is fine, it is fully constrained. If I take a look inside of here, I don't know how they used to do modeling back in the day, but this doesn't even have a placement folder for constraints, but somehow it is still the first component. While I am here, let's hide some of the datums because I will use datum planes later and I don't want those to clutter up the screen. The next object that we go to is the drive shaft. And so normally in a regular differential transmission, this is the pinion and it will be smaller than the other wheel that is going to drive. What's that one called? This one's the pinion. I forget what this one is called, but let's take the drive shaft and I'm going to edit definition so that this is capable of rotating. If I take a look on the placement tab, there are three different coincident constraints. So the first one is for the axes. So that's good for a pin connection. Let me go to the second one. Here we have some coincident constraints that will eliminate the translation. The third coincident constraint is basically a redundant constraint of the second one. I don't need this one, so I will delete this one. And then let's uncheck the allow assumptions. So now it is only partially constrained. By clicking on this button in the dashboard, this will convert the connections to a to constraints and vice versa. If I click on this button, it says, hey, this corresponds to a pin connection. And I want 360 degrees of rotation, so I'm not going to apply any joint axis settings. Let's hit the check mark. And so that is the first step over here. And for the next step in here, let's see, that is going to drive this component. Similarly, let us choose to edit definition. And if I go to the placement tab, okay, so again, we have a coincident constraint that looks like it is for the axes, that's good. Then we have a coincident constraint for my pin connection that would eliminate the translation. And then we have our third coincident constraint. This one eliminates the rotation, it gets rid of that last degree of freedom, but I want to delete this so that it can rotate. And here we have the allow assumptions. Once again, we will uncheck that one. And now let's go to the same button to convert this to a pin connection. So that's good over there. Let's hit the check mark. So that's good for the first two components. And at this point, I'm going to put in a gear between the two. So the rotation of this one will drive the rotation of that one. Before that, let me add in some preliminary geometry. Let's open up this part in its own separate window. And I'm going to put in a datum plane halfway through this surface over here because that's where I want to measure the diameter. Now let's see, let's turn off the display of these datums. Let's create a new datum plane and I'll pick this surface. Hold down the control key and pick this surface over there. And that's going to give me a mid plane. And let me call this the gear plane. Let's hit the OK button. And with that plane still selected, I will use the intersect command and hold down the control key and pick these surfaces over here in order to generate a curve at the intersection of those entities. 
and let's go to the analysis tab. I want to figure out what the diameter is there for the gear ratio and I'll get my mouse to select that curve over there. Let's change this to diameter and so I see this is a diameter of 300 inches. Let me say that again. This is a diameter of 300 inches. This is 25 feet. I don't know what this differential transmission is for, but it is for a giant vehicle. All right, let's close out of here. I just wanted to get that 300 number in my head. Let's close out of there. Similarly, I think this one is the same thing, but let's verify this. I will open up in its own separate window. Once again, let's create a new datum plane between here and this surface over there. So we'll be at the mid plane. Once again, I'll rename this to call it my gear plane and hit the OK button. Let's go to the intersect command while the datum plane is still selected and select these two surfaces over here. Hit the check mark and now let's go to analysis measure. I'll go right to the diameter command this time and let me query select by tapping the right mouse button to get that curve. Yes, this one is 300 as well. Let me close out of here. Let me hide these datums so they don't clutter up my screen later on. Let's close out of that one. You'll notice that the colors are applied at the assembly level and now we can jump over to mechanism mode to create our first gear applications mechanism here we have gears and here we have gear pair one for the name I'm not going to change it let's change the type though from generic to bevel and for the first gear axis we will select this connection and the diameter again is going to be that ginormous 300 inches I'm going to turn on my datum plane display because normally I do not define the icon location, but I am going to do it in this particular situation. So it ends up being at the right location. Let's turn off our datum plane display again. Let's go to the gear two tab and the motion axis for that one is going to be over here and it highlights it. And I can see that it's previewing the location of the gear over here on the wrong side. Let's use the flip button and now the preview is over here in the correct location. It's got the pitch circle diameter entered in there automatically. Same value of 300. Let's click the OK button and we can test out the motion. If I use the drag components and I can click on here and we can see that it's rotating around and rotating some of the other different entities. So that is good to begin with. Let's close that drag dialog box. Let's close out of mechanism mode. All right, so the next thing is what should be in here next? Well, we've got the drive shaft. We've got the carrier body. Here we have the axles. The axles are too high up in the model tree. Uh, let's see if we can drag them down, drag this left axle down below. That's good. If I try to drag the right axle, it's not going to move because somehow the right axle has some constraints in it that are preventing it from moving. But let's take a look at doing this one next. Let's edit definition. And we can see that again, it's fully constrained. By the way, I think this model was created before the days of MDX, the or the mechanism design extension was even available. So we have a coincident constraint, that's good. Here we have another coincident constraint to eliminate translation. Let's uncheck this box over here for allow assumptions. Let's convert this to a pin connection that's good for this one and hit the check mark and that one is good let me see if I can now drag it down below the carrier body let's take a look at this carrier body once more let's edit definition and I'll go to the placement tab so the carrier body is has the correct one over there let me see for translation 
for translation on the pin connection. Ah, here it is. It's using a surface from the carrier body. I don't want it to use a surface from the carrier body. I actually want it to be offset from this little surface over here. So let's change this from translation to distance. Let me see if I can just click in that collector and pick this surface over here. By the way, I happen to have measured that earlier when I was preparing for the video rather than subject you to me going through the effort. I'm going to change that to a distance of 10. Our connection definition is complete. Let's hit the check mark. Now that we no longer have the carrier body assembled to the right axle, I can drag this up in the model tree. So I have in the order that I want. I have the drive shaft. The drive shaft drives the carrier body. Then we have the right axle over here. Uh, let's see, the next one we'll go to, let's go to the left axle. I'm going to move some other stuff around over here later on, but let's go to the left axle. Once again, we are going to edit definition. It's fully constrained. Let's go to the placement tab. The coincident constraint is fine over here. This coincident constraint is fine. Let's uncheck allow assumptions and then use the convert button to put this into a pin connection. All right, that's good for the check mark. But really, okay, here we have the carrier shaft. And the carrier shaft is fully assembled to the carrier body. That's fine, but I'm going to drag this to be above the axles. And then we have the first gear over here. This gear, again, should be higher up, should be above the axles. And let's edit definition to make sure that this one is capable of moving. It's fully constrained. Let's go to the placement tab. So we've got the axes. We've got some surfaces constrained over here between the carrier gear and the carrier shaft. But again, all we have to do is uncheck allow assumptions, use the convert button to make this a pin connection, and hit the check mark. Let's grab the second carrier gear over here. Again, it should be higher than the axles. And again, we'll edit definition. Let's go to the placement tab. Uncheck the allow assumptions. Convert to a me mechanism connection and hit the check mark. And we do need to convert to the mechanism connection so that we can have those motion axes in order to set up our gear pairs. All right, so let's see. We now need to do some gear pairs between the carrier gear one and the other two axes and then carrier gear two and the two axes. Once more, we will go into mechanism mode, applications, mechanism. And let's see, actually before I do that, let's take a look at some of these different values in here. Let's go to the carrier gear. These two carrier gears are the same size. Let's open this up in its own separate window. Let me turn off the display of the datums that already exist. Let's create a new datum plane at the mid plane between these two surfaces. And I'm going to call this my gear plane. Let's click the OK button out of there. And let's go to, let's select the plane, go to the intersect command, hold down the control key and pick these two surfaces in order to generate a curve. Now we will measure the diameter. Let me query select till we get the curve to highlight. And this diameter is 140, 140 inches, almost 12 feet there. Let's close out of there. Again, I need to know that number for setting up my gear connections. Oh, let me see. I can just close this window. Let's do the same thing for this one over here. I happen to know it's the same, but I do want to create a datum plane at the mid plane in case I need to locate the icon for the gear connection. Let's hit the plane, pick this surface, control key this surface, and rename it. Hit the OK button out of there. Let's hide these datums. And let's see. Let's now go to the axle. Let me open this one up. 
and let's hide some of these datums so that they don't clutter up the screen later on. Let's create a plane at the midplane between this surface and control this surface over here. Uh, it's showing up big on the computer screen. Let's go to the display tab and adjust the outline. I'm going to change from size to reference. And I'll pick this surface. So the datum plane is approximately the same size of that surface. Again, let's rename this to the gear plane. Hit the OK button out of there with the plane still selected. Once again, we'll create an intersect between the plane and these different surfaces. And again, I'm just creating that curve so I can perform a measurement of the diameter. All right, let me tap the right mouse button until we get the curve to highlight. There, that curve. There we go. Okay, so this one is 100. The bigger gear is 140. This one is 100. All right, close out of there. Let's close this one over here. And now let's hop over to mechanism mode. Applications mechanism. And I've got the one gear pair in here. If you expand connections in the mechanism tree, you can see the gears inside of here. Let's create a, another gear pair. So let's go to the gears icon change the type once again to a bevel gear and for the first motion axis it's going to be this motion axis and now let's change the diameter here this is going to be 140 let me turn on my plane display for a moment wow this is cluttered i can see where the plane is but i'm going to need to do some stuff to declutter some more let's locate the icon on that plane over there. Let's go to gear two. Let's turn off our datum plane display. And for the second gear that it is going to drive, that is going to be for this motion axis over here. Once again, it's previewing it on the wrong side. Let's use the flip button for the relative location of it. And I can see that now it's previewing over there. I know it's a little cluttered, but I can see that it's previewing over there. It's automatically got the correct pitch circle diameter. Let's click the OK button out of there. So that is our second gear pair. Let's go and create one between that same carrier gear and the left axle. Let's go to gears. First motion axis, again, we'll pick this one over here. For the diameter, that is going to be 140. For the icon location, I can pick the plane out of the model tree. Let's scroll over here and grab the gear plane. For gear two, it's going to be this one. And, oops, I forgot to change this to bevel. Let me make sure that everything is still in here correctly. Do, 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 do. That is good for gear two. Let me use the flip button to get it on this side over there. There we have the value of 100. By the way, I don't need to do anything on the properties tab, but this is where you can change the pressure angle if you so desire. 20 degrees is very common for uh, envelope gears. All right. That's good. Let's click the OK button out of here. So we have our second gear pair. Let's see. I'm just going to check the carrier gear too. Yep, I do. I did create a gear plane inside of there. All right, let's do our other two gear pairs between carrier gear two and the right and left axles. Let me just do this one real quickly. Do, 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 bevel gear and for the motion axis for this one. It's there. Pitch circle diameter 140. Icon location. I'll just pick the plane out of the model tree. For gear two, it's going to be this connection here for that green part. Here it has the diameter of 100. It's got the preview on the wrong side, so let's flip that and click the OK button and repeat that one more time. Let's do a gear pair between here icon location there diameter 140 
And once again, I forgot to change this to bevel. All right, everything in here is good. Let's go to gear two. That'll be this one over there. And again, the preview's in the wrong location. Let's flip it. Diameter's good. Let's click the OK button out of there. So there are all the different gear pairs in here. By the way, if your different symbols are cluttering up the screen, you've got the mechanism display command. So I could turn off the display of gears for a moment. That way I don't have the icons on the computer screen. Let's throw in a motor. I can do that by selecting the joint axis for the first gear. And then from here we can choose to create a motor. Let's go to the profile details. I'm gonna drive the angular velocity. Let's do a constant velocity of 90 degrees per second so that we get one rotation every four seconds. Taking a look in here, which is the direction? Just doing the right-hand rule. Oh, I think it's right. If not, I can always flip the direction later on. Uh, let's see. That's good for the motor. Let's click the check mark. Now we can create an, a kinematic analysis. I'll click on analyses in the mechanism tree and then use the new icon. Let's change the type from position to kinematic. Let's run this for 16 seconds so that we get four revolutions. I'm gonna crank up the frame rate. 10 frames per second is always you know, kind of low for me. If I go to the motors tab, we have the single motor defined from start to end. And let's hit the run button. And there we can see that we have this spinning, which spins that, which spins the wheels in the same direction. Now, the true point of a differential transmission is so when our cars or vehicles are making a turn to the right or turn to the left, that these other gears over here, actually these gears here, are going to spin. They're not going to remain fixed. Uh, and so that we have the two different wheels spinning at the different speeds. I need to figure out how to simulate that inside of mechanisms because I really do want to see these two gears over here moving. If I hit the play button, you can see this in slow motion, how everything is being driven in here. So that's the basics of setting up the mechanism information for a differential transmission inside of Creo Parametric. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.